dear students in the previous classes we have successfully defined and discussed about countable and uncountable sets and some of its definitions now from the definition of the countable and uncountable set we can state the following intuitive theorem we already know that if a bigger set is finite all of its subsets are finite we can extend this definition on the case of countable set as well that is if the bigger set has a bijection from set of all natural numbers onto that set then the smaller set can always have a bijection from the set of all natural numbers or if the bigger set can be counted in some sense all of its smaller sets can also be counted that's the basic idea and the second thing is if the smaller set cannot be counted or let's say it is uncountable then the bigger set can also be not counted not able to count in a proper sense so the bigger set also should be uncountable that's what we are going to state in the next theorem the theorem states that suppose s and t are sets and t subsets of s then if s is a countable set then t is also a countable set and if t is uncountable then s is also uncountable in brief the theorem states that the subsets of a countable set are always countable and the supersets of an uncountable set are always uncountable this is a theorem which we do not need any proper proof if you want to have an if you want to have a proof you can contact me as well next is in some cases it is not always easy to define a bijection from the set of all natural numbers onto that particular set in order to prove that the set is countable or countably infinite so we need some cases in which the rigidity of the bijection can be relaxed or is there any way we can define the countable set by means of other directions or can we define a countable set without a bijection or can we relax some condition in the bijection in order to define a countable set that's what which is going to state in the next theorem which states that the following statements are equivalent s is countable which is equivalent to there exists a subjection or onto function from n onto s which is equivalent to there exists an injection of s onto n which say, states that s is a countable set means there exists a bijection from n onto that set or vice versa which is equivalent to saying that there exists an onto function from n onto s that is we do not need a bijection from n to s to say that s is countable we only need an onto function from n to s so that s becomes countable or if we are able to define a one one function from s to n which also means that s is a countable set this is what we are going to study we need a proper proof for this theorem i think you understood what i mean so the concept of bijection in the case of countable set can be relaxed on to more or less 
similar condition with the use of an on to function from n to s or a one one function from s to n so how we prove this we assume the first statement a and we prove the second statement and we assume the second statement b and we prove the third statement and we assume the third statement c and we prove the first statement so one implies two two implies three three implies one or a implies b b implies c and c implies a this, this is what we are going to prove So, we first prove that A implies B. How we prove that A implies B? First, we assume that S is a countable set, which means that S is either finite or countably infinite. Let's say S is finite. Then, by definition, there exists a bijection H from some set n suffix n which means the set 1 2 3 etc n on to s let that bijection be small h but we have to define an on to function from the set of all natural numbers on to that set what we are going to define is we are going to define the small h capital h from n in in a way that h of k should be equal to small h of k for k is equal to 1 to n and h of k should be is equal to h of n for k greater than n that means we are actually defining the same function small h in the case of 1 to n and we have to define the values for n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 etc all those values should be assumed to h of n in way in this way we have successfully defined a subjection from n to s so i'll give you a figure this small h let's assume is a bijection which contains n elements that is this is n suffix n 1 2 3 etc n and its images one is mapped down to a1 two is mapped down to a2 three is mapped down to a3 etc n is mapped down to a from this edge we can define a subjection capital h in this way one is mapped down to a1 two is mapped down to a2 three is mapped down to a3 etc n is mapped down to a n so up until this point small h and capital h are same now we have to define the values for n plus one n plus two n plus three etc all the images after the certain stage n should be equal to a n so the image of n plus 1 is a n image of n plus 2 is a n image of n plus 3 is a n etc image of all the points after n should be a n this is what we are going to define as capital s clearly this is a known to function because corresponding to every element in the range set we have an element in the domain set so this is a non to function from the set of all natural numbers onto our s our s consists of a1 a2 a3 etc a so if s is finite the result is true now let's assume that s is denumerable which means countably infinite s is if s is countably infinite by the definition there exists a bijection from the set of all natural numbers onto S. So every bijection itself is a 1 1 and onto function. So if there exists a bijection from N to S, we can safely say that there exists an onto function from N to S. So that bijection itself is a subjection from N to S. So in the case of S is finite we have proved that there exists a onto function from n to s and in the case of denumerable set we have defined that there exists a subjection from n to s which is which is the bijection itself so we have proved that whenever s is countable we only need to find a subjection from n to s now we move on to the next part of the theorem 
so we assume that there exists a subjection from n to s or a non to function from n to s now we have to define a one one function from s to n okay so let us assume that h is a subjection from n to s subjection means on to function okay now we define a function h1 from s to n not n to s s to n by letting h1 of s to be the least element in the set h1 inverse of s set of all n element of n such that n of n is equal to s i will give a pictorial representation of this let's say our h is this h means we have a subjection from n to s our s is a1 a2 etc at for our convenience so subjection means on to function so i have mapped 1 on to a1 2 on to a1 3 on to a2 4 on to a3 5 on to a3 etc n n plus 1 after the certain stage should be at okay now h1 is a function from this which means a1 a2 a3 etc at on to this set okay this set not every element in the set may be the image we only need to find a one one function from this we only we do not need to map every element in this set onto something we only need to define a one one function so what we take is the element 1 and 2 are mapped on to a1 what what will be the least element which is mapped which is 1 that is that will be the image of a1 in the case of h1 in the case of h a2 we have only one element which is mapped on to a2 so the image of a2 should be 3 and the element 4 and 5 is mapped on to a3 so what is the least element which is mapped on to a3 among the 4 and 5 4 is the least element so the image of a3 should be 4 and so on consider the last element n n plus 1 etc x all the elements are mapped on to a3 what is the least element which is mapped on to a3 which is n which will be the image of a3 in the case of h1 so by the definition of least element on a set there exist exactly one least element so we have defined the image of a1 a2 etc a3 as the least element among this set so corresponding to every element there may exist exactly one element okay that's why this function is one one okay here two is not an image of any element because 2 is not the least element corresponding to the any element in h so this is the function one particular example of a function h1 in other words h1 is an injection so that take two element s and t in s nst which means the least element corresponding to h1 nst is the least element corresponding to h1 corresponding to s and t so h1 of s and h h1 of t should be nst and since h of s h of nst h of nst means the image of this should be same which is h of nst is s as well as t because h1 is the inverse of h so if we replace h1 by h inverse so nst is equal to h inverse of s so s is equal to h of nst similarly nst is the h inverse of t so t is equal to n h of nst so in that case we can say that s is equal to t which implies that the set is the function is 1 1 now we move on to the last two part so we have h1 is an injection from s to n now we have to say that it is a bijection so since h1 is an injection from s to n corresponding to every element there exists a unique element in this so h1 s should be 
a proper subset of h1s is a subset of n because h1 is defined to be an injection from s to n by assuming condition c injection means 1 1 we didn't say it is an onto function but if we take the image of h1 on s h1 of s is what the image of h1 in s which should be either a proper subset of n or should be equal to n already we assume that h1 is an injection if we map h1 onto s onto h1s that function should be an onto function as well so if we define h1 from s to h1s we get an injection as well as surjection so we get a bijection from s onto h1s also h1s should always be a proper subset of n because h1s means the image of the elements in s the image of the elements in s should be a subset of the set of all natural numbers since h1 is a function from s on to n since n is countable we have a theorem that a subset of every countable set is countable and h1s is a countable h1s is a subset of n we can say that h1s is countable so we have a function h1 from s to h1s which is a bijection and h1s is countable by the definition of countable set we can say that s is countable because if h1s is countable then there exists a bijection from h1s to n already we have assumed that h1 is a bijection from s to h1s so taking the combination or taking the composition h1 is a bijection from s to h1s and let's say g is a bijection from h1s to n so if we take g composition h1 which will be a bijection from s to n which is enough to say that s is countable so if there exists an injection from the set s into n we can safely say that s is a countable set this is the complete proof of this theorem thank you